Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Amy Timko and I'm an admissions officer at Rutgers Law School and joining me today is Assistant Dean of Admissions, Dean Anita Walt Walton. Uh, today we are going to cover what you need to know about applying to law school and how admissions work at, works at Rutgers Law, as well as offerings and opportunities available here. Before jumping in, I wanna note that we will be taking questions in the chat at the end of the presentation. So please hold your questions until the end of the presentation if possible. And if we happen to not get to your question, please uh, feel free to email us after today's presentation. So why Rutgers Law? So why would, should you apply to Rutgers Law? Because we know you want to attend law school in a great location with a robust academic experience and pursue a fulfilling career after having graduated with as little debt as possible. You will find this all here at Rutgers Law, as well as a few more things that we are extremely proud of. We are one law school with two locations in Newark and Camden that allow you to access three of the largest legal markets in the United States, New Jersey, New York, and Philadelphia. Our Newark location is located just 15 minutes from New York City. Within walking distance is the Essex County Courthouse and U.S. District Court of New Jersey, the Prudential Center, and many great restaurants. Rutgers Law in Newark gained the nickname the People's Electric Law School in the 1970s after a period of activism. Rutgers Law's Minority Student Program was founded in Newark in 1968 and continues to bring a wonderful cohort of students each year. The Minority Student Program, or MSP, is a post-admission program that serves full-time and part-time law students coming from underrepresented groups in the legal profession or disadvantaged socioeconomic backgrounds. After the merge of our law schools in 2015, MSP was brought to the Camden campus, and now students at both locations can benefit from paid summer internship opportunities, networking events with MSP alumni, study groups with upperclassmen, and an extended orientation. If you'd like to be considered for MSP when you apply, on your application, you must indicate your interest in the program when it asks. You can also include a diversity statement to be considered. Across the bridge from Philadelphia is Camden's University District, featuring Camden County Community College, Rowan's Medical School, and the Rutgers Camden campus. Within walking distance is the U.S. District Court of New Jersey, the New Jersey Superior Court, and the Camden Municipal Court, while a five-minute train ride will bring you into Center City, Philadelphia. Just within the past few years, new apartments, office buildings, and a new park have been built around the waterfront in a period of revitalization. The Camden location has two exclusive programs, Social Justice Scholars and Summer Jumpstart. The Summer Jumpstart program requires no application and is open to all admitted Camden students. During Jumpstart, you can take one of your core law classes the summer before starting, typically contracts, helping to ease the transition into law school by acclimating you to the rigors of a course while leaving you with one less class to worry about during the fall. Only one course can be taken in Jumpstart. The Social Justice Scholars Program allows students with a commitment to public service and social justice to earn a small scholarship, mentoring, summer funding, and more in exchange for completing pro bono hours. That application is made available to accepted Camden students in the spring, and each year a group of around 10 students are selected to be social justice scholars. While there are a few differences between our locations, there are many more similarities and things that keep us connected, like the holodeck. The holodeck allows students to take courses that are campus exclusive. So democracy and law, which is only offered in Newark, and comparative labor and employment law, which is only offered in Camden, can be made available to all students from the comfort of their home campus. Two identical holodeck classrooms exist in Newark and Camden, equipped with microphones and a camera that creates a live feed between the rooms. Each semester, a list of holodeck courses is released and students can petition to have a course offered in the holodeck. You also have access to the law libraries at either location, which serve the educational and research needs of law school students and faculty. Our students are provided with online research databases that help make legal research a bit easier. And in addition, our reference librarians are happy to help navigate the combined 1.2 million volumes. All of our reference librarians have graduated from law school themselves, 
so they know how to best address your unique legal research needs. To get a better understanding of life at Rutgers Law, we recommend reading the brief, which is available on our website and contains blogs written by current law students. There you can read about student organizations visiting the Supreme Court, networking opportunities through MSP, how there's no such thing as a typical law student, and so much more. Here at Rutgers Law, we offer a robust legal education with flexibility and practical training incorporated into everything we do. Students have the option to choose between our full-time and part-time programs to best accommodate their schedule and needs. Our traditional full-time Juris Doctor program takes three years to complete. Classes typically take place Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Your first year schedule is made for you. We'll go over the specific courses a little later. Full-time students can work a maximum of 20 hours per week. The part-time evening program takes four to four and a half years to complete. Many students in the part-time program work a nine to five job. So we are excited to announce that starting in fall of 2021, our part-time evening program has transitioned to a hybrid format. Classes start at 6 p.m. and are typically three or four days per week. The hybrid model is structured so that you will be on campus mostly two nights a week for in-person instruction, and you will have remote instruction no more than two nights per week. Specific course times and schedules vary by campus and by year. Part-time students do not have a limit on the amount of hours they can work per week. At the Camden campus, we also offer a part-time day option. This typically applies for people with a full-time job with evening or irregular hours. The part-time day program will not have hybrid instruction. There are eight core courses all law students are required to take their 1L year. These include courses such as contracts, torts, civil procedure, criminal law, property, constitutional law, and legal research and writing one and two. After the core courses are completed, you are able to create your own schedule with electives. And a complete list of electives can be found on our website under the academics tab. Whether you want to spend a semester living abroad or take a two-week deep dive into a specific topic with a travel study course, students can gain international insight and build global leadership skills. We have partnerships with Leiden University in the Netherlands and the University of Graz in Austria, where you can spend a whole semester studying outside of the U.S. A trip to Cuba is available through the Community and Transactional Lawyering Clinic, and visiting South Africa is a part of our South African Constitutional Law class. In addition to the robust legal curriculum you will have access to while here at Rutgers Law, we also value the overlap between law and other academic disciplines. The law school is proudly embedded in Rutgers University, one of the nation's leading research institutions. Because of the rich university resources and our interdisciplinary focus, we are able to offer students more than 11 dual degree options, including a JDMD, JDMBA, a JDMSW, and several others. For all dual degree programs, you must apply and be admitted separately to each program. The law school will accept up to 12 credits from another program. Once you are a student, you will work with the registrars from both programs to create a plan of which courses will be accepted. This academic flexibility also applies to specialty areas offered here at Rutgers Law. We offer JD certificates in four programs that will allow you to customize your education and develop expertise in the practice area you are most interested in. Our current JD certificate programs include corporate and business law, family law, immigration law, and criminal law and procedure. If you choose to pursue a JD certificate, you will take courses, 15 credits over a variety of electives in this field and complete relevant externship or clinic work. We believe that hands-on practical training is just as important as traditional in-class academic learning. Therefore, we have many opportunities for students to gain real-world experience while in law school, including clinics, journals, externships, and moot court competitions. Rutgers Law School is a pioneer in clinical education and currently boasts 16 clinics across its two campuses in Newark and Camden, where student casework for actual clients is principally supervised by full-time Rutgers Law faculty. Some of the clinics offered include the Immigrants Rights Clinic, 
Child Advocacy Clinic, Education and Health Law Clinic, the Federal Tax Law Clinic, and more. Students in the clinical education programs learn lawyering skills and development of professional identity while working with clients on numerous issues. And we are consistently ranked as one of the top clinical programs in the country in annual surveys. We also maintain a proud tradition of publishing influential legal scholarship in student run law journals. In the weeks after 1L year, students can write onto journals at either location. Such journals include Law Review, Law and Public Policy, and the Women's Rights Law Reporter. As a journal member, you either write a note or comment for credit and experience to add on to your resume. Externships are open to students who have completed their first year curriculum and would like to gain practical experience by working with attorneys or judges. Externships can help a student discover an interest in a particular, particular area of law. After completing an externship, a student may be able to get a letter of recommendation for future job prospects. Externships are unpaid. However, a student can receive academic credit for these externships. On our website, you can find a list of locations where you can extern across New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. Finally, Rutgers Law students can enhance their advocacy skills by training and competing on teams against other law schools, regionally, nationally, and internationally in mock trial, appellate moot court, mediation, negotiation, and arbitration com competitions. Rutgers Law students have a strong record of success at these competitions, because of their extensive preparation, excellent coaching, and trial, oral advocacy, and mediation skills. Rutgers Law School is also committed to providing students with meaningful pro bono opportunities that instill an ethic of service while providing much needed legal assistance to the broader community. Through the program, our students develop skills in professional responsibility, problem solving, and leadership, while also internalizing an ethic of service that is central to the legal profession. Our communities of Camden and Newark are the perfect cities in which to provide direct services and develop an appreciation for structural inequities. Students perform pro bono work in a variety of settings. Most of our projects are in-house partnerships with legal service providers focused on bankruptcy, disability rights, educational equity, Iraqi refugee assistance, prisoner reentry, and many other areas. In addition, students often gain approval to work with entities such as the Domestic Violence Unit of the Camden County Family Court and the ACLU. Excitingly, Rutgers Law has spearheaded the New Jersey Innocence Project, which is based out of the Camden campus. The breadth of Rutgers faculty expertise, along with assistance from students, will allow the Innocence Project to offer an impressive array of services, including reviewing requests from prisoners, gathering and examining trial information and investigative records, dealing with forensic issues, assisting in re-entry into the general population, and advocating for better practices and criminal justice reforms. Students can begin participating in some of our pro bono initiatives as early as 1L year. And even if you do not intend to practice in the public interest sector upon graduation, our interactive pro bono programs offer you the invaluable opportunity to immediately start developing your legal knowledge and practice skills. Your Rutgers Law School academic experience will be guided by our exceptional faculty who are professors, mentors, scholars, and leaders. We have more than 120 faculty members, creating one of the finest, most diverse, and most intellectually wide-ranging communities of legal scholars and clinical professors in the nation. Our professors are passionate about teaching in and out of the classroom, and they are accessible too. They'll involve you in their research, amicus briefs, clinical projects, and wholeheartedly embrace the role of our student to faculty ratio, which is 7.7 .7 to one. And we often hear from our students how amazed they are at our professor's open door policies. Not only are our faculty members student driven, they are also influential in widely published scholars. They've written countless books, law review articles, textbooks, and they're quoted frequently in the news. They represent clients, file amicus briefs, and serve as counsel in impact litigation, in addition to being consulted on legislation, law reform, and matters of public policy. And our impressive faculty roster doesn't end at current professors. 
We also have a rich legacy of past professors, such as former U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We just highlighted how at Rutgers Law, you will receive an intellectually demanding education and ample real-world experience. But we don't stop there. Our Career Development Office provides you with every possible resource to combine your interests, experience, and skills into a successful career. Once you become a law student, you will be assigned an advisor and they will help you with finding internships, externships, and jobs. They also host skills training programs, panels, and workshops throughout the year on networking, resume, cover letter writing, and more. Career Development also hosts on-campus interviews in the fall semester for upperclassmen. This allows you the opportunity to interview with law firms and businesses for an externship or post-graduation job. In addition to the dedicated counselors in our Career Development Office, many administrators and staff members across the law school have earned a JD and have law practice experience, which they rely on to help you succeed. The Career Development Office is dedicated to helping you find meaningful employment. We know employment results are an important factor when making the decision on what law school to attend, and we think our numbers speak for themselves. The majority of our students find employment in full-time JD required or JD advantaged jobs within 10 months of graduation. Our graduates find employment across a variety of sectors with employers through New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and the United States. And no matter where in the United States you plan to practice, our alumni network will welcome you at your first job and support you on the way to your top, top job. Our 20,000 plus alumni work at every level. They are leaders at big law firms, solo practitioners in every field of law, high profile corporate legal counsel, influential members of the judiciary and legislatures, and tireless advocates for the public interest. Some of our alum include Brian Quinn, who is the U.S. Director of U.S. Public Policy at Audible, the world's largest seller and producer of audiobooks. Before Elizabeth Warren became a U.S. Senator for Massachusetts, a Democratic presidential contender, she spent her formative law school years at Rutgers Law. Rebecca Bresnik is currently the lead attorney for NASA's International Space Station, and Fabiana Pierre-Louis has been confirmed by Governor Phil Murphy for a seat on the New Jersey Supreme Court becoming the first black woman to sit on the court. To highlight fantastic stories, such as Rebecca Bresnik's journey into space law with NASA, the law school launched a new podcast series called The Power of Attorney, which features our co-deans in conversation with leading legal minds, including alumni of our law school, our professors, and others. The series gives listeners an inside look at the power of a legal education and explores what it means to be a lawyer in an ever-changing world. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. So if interested, be sure to look it up. At Rutgers Law, we do our best to make a high quality education as affordable as possible. Here are the costs of tuition and fees for the upcoming year. The amount shown for full-time students is per year, not per semester. Part-time students are billed per credit rather than per semester, and a total of 90 credits are required to graduate. If you are out of state and considering moving to New Jersey to attend Rutgers Law, you should be happy to hear that you can easily establish in-state residency and start paying in-state tuition in your first semester by providing our office with a few required documents like a New Jersey lease and license. When you apply to Rutgers Law, you are automatically considered for scholarships. We offer many partial scholarships, and in fact, the majority of our students each year receive a scholarship. We also collect scholarship opportunities from law firms, bar associations, and other organizations for our current students to apply to. Most students finance law school through a combination of scholarship and financial aid, which is the other big area of financial support that can help you with tuition and cost. To apply for most types of aid, including loans, you are required to submit the free application for federal student aid. Depending on your circumstances, there are different types of loans and financial aid opportunities available to you. For more information on that, you can visit our website at financialaid.ruckers.edu. We have directors of financial aid at each campus who are part of the admissions team. 
This means you don't have to go searching across main campus for help and you can get advice specifically from a law school financial aid expert rather than someone split across several academic programs. Now that we have covered key offerings of our JD program and how to finance your legal education, let's take a look at the application process. All law school applications in the country go through the Law School Admissions Council, or LSAC. The first thing you need to do in the application process is visit their website and create an account. All required documents needed to apply to Rutgers Law must be submitted through LSAC. Here are the documents you will need to submit when you apply. You must submit transcripts from every undergraduate and graduate institution you were enrolled in. This includes any school, like a community college or foreign institution as part of studying abroad. Letters or recommendations can come from professors, supervisors, or whoever you believe will write the best letter for you. If you are coming right from undergrad or recently graduated, you may want to contact a professor who you know well. If you have been in the workforce for several years, you can ask supervisors or colleagues. For the personal statement, there is no set topic. However, many successful essays include an applicant's reason for why they want to attend law school and what they would like to do with their degree, if they know. You should aim for around 1,000 words, including why Rutgers Law specifically is also nice, but not required. Your resume should highlight your work experience, especially anything related to the legal field. A one to two page resume is ideal, but for those who have extensive work experience, it can certainly be longer. Another important thing to note is on the application for Rutgers Law, you are asked to select your campus preference, Camden, Newark, or no preference. Your campus preference determines where you are assigned after being accepted. So if you know which campus you'd like to attend, be sure to select that option on that question. Whenever, excuse me, wherever you begin classes for your first year, you must remain for your first year. After that, you have the freedom to switch between campuses for a semester, year, or the rest of your legal education. 157 or above on the LSAT and a 3.39 or above undergraduate GPA are considered competitive scores. It is important to keep in mind that these are not minimum scores needed to apply. Our review process is holistic, meaning that all aspects of your application are taken into consideration when making a decision. Also, we do not average LSAT scores, so your highest score carries the most weight. Here you can see all upcoming LSATs announced so far. Three months of preparation is recommended, so be sure to factor that in when you're choosing a test date. The LSAT Flex is not viewed differently than the standard LSAT exam. We often get questions about the best method of preparation for the LSAT, and the answer is, it depends on how you learn. Some people know that they need more guidance and deadlines, so an online course may be right for them. Others will self-study with prep books. These are some of the LSAT prep companies that our work-study students have used and recommended in the past. I typically say to start with Khan Academy as they offer free prep in partnership with LSAC. Last, but certainly not least, are the important deadlines. Our application is currently open, our priority deadline is March 15th, and our final deadline is May 15th. Submitting an application earlier in the cycle is usually better as earning a seat in the class can be less competitive and scholarship funds can get limited closer to the final deadline. That being said, it's most important to make sure you are confident in your application and documents rather than meeting the March deadline. One final bit about the application process is that we have rolling admissions. The admissions committee begins reviewing files in October and it can take between six to eight weeks sometimes shorter, sometimes longer, from the date your file was made complete to receive a decision. You can follow us on all these places to stay in touch and find out what new things are going on at Rutgers Law. Here is our contact information, so if you have any questions, you can email admissions at law.rutgers.edu. And we are going to open up the presentation now to any questions that you may have. So please feel free to enter your questions into the chat and please do us a favor. And if possible, um, when you send the chat question, please send it to everyone and not specifically to a, a panelist.
you, Amy, for that great presentation. Hi, everyone. I am uh, Anita Walton. I'm the assistant dean for law school admissions here on the newer campus. Amy is on the Camden campus. So we can answer any kinds of questions that you may have. And there's one right now about requirements or deadlines to be able to be considered for summer jumpstart. At the moment, um, you need to be admitted to the law school first. And then we will be sending out information about summer jumpstart. They have not uh, settled yet on the dates and when it's going to start, but don't worry, you, we will get you um, all the information you need when that program is ready to roll. What drives a high percentage of clerkship um, uh, appointments? New Jersey has a very um, large judiciary and one of the largest of any of the states in the country, believe it or not. And what happens with a lot of students is that that extra year of clerking with the judge is almost like a postdoc year that they're spending at the arm of a judge, at the elbow of a judge, um, seeing what's going on in the courtroom, um, understanding how uh, cases are moving through the court system. Um, and so it's, a, it's another way of understanding um, how law works. So for many students, they will apply for clerkship first and spend that year clerking. Some of them will have jobs in law firms that they're going to go to after they finish clerking. And a lot of the firms do like to see that you have clerked for a year with a judge. It's a, it's a good resume builder. Um, we have a question. Can you take dual degree program courses as electives rather than doing the full time dual degree? Um, so, no, so you would have to be in a dual degree program if you're trying to take courses outside of the law school that are going to count towards your law degree. Um, so, yeah, you need to be in the dual degree program to be um, swapping credits or sharing credits. Otherwise, you need to be taking all of your credits at the law school for those 90 credits to graduate with your law degree. Um, we are recording this. There were a few questions about that. So if you did have to step away at one point, this is being recorded. And tomorrow um, you'll be getting an email from me with the link to the recording, and it'll also be posted on our website. One thing I want to mention about taking courses outside the law school is um, that we do have some students who will take a course or two at the business school, which is right off the street from us, but it's got to be a graduate level course. It has to be approved by one of the uh, people in our, one of the deans in our academic um, area and they can count up to six credits, but it can't be something like beginning Japanese. Okay. It's gotta be something related to law and it can't be a repeat of what you've already taken. So let's say if you've taken business associations at the law school, taking business law in the MBA program is not going to count because you've had a business law course in our, in the law school. Okay. So it can't be a repeat. Um, Amy, you want to answer about the social justice scholars? Uh, I don't see that question. Where is that? Um, they want, they, can you share information about the social justice scholars program? What's expected? What are the opportunities, the scholarship amount, et cetera? Sure. The scholarship amount, uh, I believe, I mean, it can change per year, but it's, it's usually around the 3000 to $5,000 mark is what our social justice scholars will get. Um, and then, so it's a lot working. So Dean Jill Friedman, who's the Dean of the pro bono and public interest program. Um, so she is your mentor and you'll be working with her. There's a lot of different pro bono, um, activities that go on um, that you'll you'll be asked to participate in as well. And like I said, it is it is a limited program so that so you have to be an accepted student. Once you're accepted in the spring, you will receive an application for us if you'd like to apply for it. So then you apply for it and then the selection process goes through uh, Dean Friedman. Um, and then you're usually notified kind of like later later summer if you'll be in the program. And at max, I've only ever seen about 10 students per year doing the program because it is meant to be a small cohort of students that can be um, very mentored in the public interest area by Dean Friedman. There's a question about if someone does summer jumpstart in Camden, can they continue to Newark? And the answer to that is no. If you do summer jumpstart in Camden, then you have to stay at the Camden campus for your first year because they're, um, the courses that they offer are in a different sequence than they are in Newark. And so they take into account people who are, are doing summer jumpstart, which typically is a contracts class and Newark does not have that same program. So if you do summer jumpstart, you are you stay in Camden for that year. After that, then you can switch campuses and you can come up to Newark if you so choose. Um, another question about MSP and whether it applies to LGBTQ plus students. The answer is it can. Um, if you feel that you have been subjected to um, microaggressions, um, discrimination, um, racism, hate speech, then 
do talk about that in your application and you may be considered for MSP. So, yes, it, the MSP criteria is fairly broad. So it's not just students coming from um, uh, low income, single parent homes, but also people who have experienced any kind of, of aggressions, microaggressions growing up um, that have been hurtful and been hateful. So yes, it can count. Uh, I wanna to touch a little bit more on requirements to qualify um, for the in-state tuition rate. So you do not have to be a resident of New Jersey for a full calendar year before applying. So that's one of the advantages. Um, of Rutgers Law. So you starting from your first semester of your first year, you can qualify for in-state residency, but you do have to switch over to a New Jersey license and you have to provide um, like a New Jersey lease for us. Um, and we would need those documentations plus a um, notified application, residency application. Once those are once we receive all those, then we are able to switch you over to in-state tuition. Another question about if the March LSAT is too late to apply for the fall. The answer is no. We will actually take up to the April LSAT, although seat deposits will start coming in. Uh, the first round of seat deposits are due April 15th because we've been admitting students so far in the process. So seats might get more limited based on how many seat deposits come in, but the March um, LSAT is fine for this fall. And yes, a recording will not be. Are you going to send the recording, Amy, or just post it? I email the recording and post it as well. Okay, so the recording will be set. Um, requirements and deadlines for jump, summer jumpstart. Um, so summer jumpstart, the dates for summer jumpstart for this summer have not officially uh, been decided on yet, but it usually starts in June. Um, you will receive an email from us um, if you have um, been admitted and you've been assigned to the Camden campus or if you've selected the Camden campus because it is only a Camden campus program um, and you will be offered um, to, you will be able to register for it. So there aren't any um, specific requirements except for you have to be attending your 1L year on the Campton campus. Uh, and then deadlines, deadlines would be, you know, as you know, once the date is set in stone, then, you know, we will email, we will let you know when you have to decide or register for that course by. There's a question about whether part-time students are allowed to participate in clinics and pro bono work. The answer is yes. Um, What's going to limit you is what kind of daytime hours you have available. For example, if you're in a clinic where you have to go to court, you're going to have to be able to take time off from work to be able to go to court during the day. So it's a, you're, you can definitely do clinics, you can definitely do pro bono work, but it all depends on your availability and whether or not you've got flexibility at your work. Some people are working um, 20 hours a week as opposed to full time, and so they've got some extra time. Our schedule is such that Fridays are no, there's no upper level classes on Fridays and oftentimes those are days when people are working in clinic doing pro bono work. Um, but if you're a part time student and you're working full time, you're, you'll have those opportunities, but they'll be a little limited by how much time you have available to participate. Question about letters of recommendations. When should you notify a professor that you would like them to write a letter? Um, and let's say it's your first semester at the university. I mean, you don't have to do it as a freshman in your first semester. Actually, if you're earlier on in your education, you know, that's the great time to start establishing a relationship with your professor that hopefully will span beyond just one semester. You might take more courses, uh, you might TA for them, you might help them with research so that by, you know, summer of, you know, going into your junior year or sometimes during your junior year, you can ask them if they would be willing to write you a good letter of recommendation. And I emphasize write you a good letter of recommendation. Um, it's very important to be candid with your professors because it would be very unfortunate if they write a letter of recommendation that's not glowing for you. That's right. Um, someone asked a question about they didn't score as high as a 157, which is our median on the LSAT, but they have a very high GPA. Our process of review, reviewing files is a holistic one, which means that we look at everything, not just the LSAT and the GPA, but also your essay, your letters of recommendation, as Ms. Timko just mentioned, um, your activities, um, uh, your personal statement, I think, is a big part of the application. Any work experience, community organizations you might be you might belong to or participate in. So, you know, there are some things that will help balance out other things in the application. So don't be discouraged. If your LSAT is below our median, you've got a great GPA, um, go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You, we see a lot of different types of things in each application. And our goal and our mission 
is to make sure that we bring in a class that represents a lot of different segments of our society. So um, by all means, go ahead and give it a try. We do not um, do spring admission, so it is a fall admission program. So, um, you know, if you're not able to apply this cycle, when you know when applications open again in September, you'd be applying for the following fall. All right. There's another question about the foreign law program. I'll just do this very quickly because it probably doesn't apply to many of you. The foreign lawyer program is a two year program whereby if you were a lawyer in another country outside of the United States um, and practice law, earned a law degree in practice law, that you can complete a JD at Rutgers in two years. And typical what happens is you do the first year required curriculum and then spend one more year in the upper level curriculum. We will give you 30 credits towards your JD out of the 90 that you need to graduate. And so that's how the foreign lawyer program works. Um, you can send us an email and we'll be happy to chat with you a little more individually about that because it doesn't affect a whole lot of the people who are on this call. Um, two questions that kind of go together um, have to do with having done work in graduate school. Um, so how's a GPA and undergrad GPA evaluated considering an improvement in academics in grad in grad school? Right? So that's a plus for you. Um, you know, sometimes it takes sometimes it takes a student a little bit to to get their footing in college, right? And you know, so you, your your freshman and sophomore year might be you know a little bit more troublesome, and then you kind of pick up pace, you go to grad school, and then you continue to do well. We'd love to see that you do well in grad school, right? Because that's a rigorous program and you're applying to a rigorous program. So we can see that, okay, we might have had a bumpy start or a bumpy portion of our undergrad, but that you go on and you do well in a grad program. Um, so, and like we said, like Dean Walton said, we read holistically. So we look at that, right? And we're gonna see the trend. Um, we also were asked, how does it look if you start a master's degree program and you don't finish? I read applications and they started a pro, you know, a student started a program and they realized, Maybe I'm not, you know, putting, you know, the time into this because I really want to be doing something else. So I'm going to stop this program and I'm going to go on to, to my law degree. Like I said, we read holistically uh, and usually it is helpful in those instances that you do not finish your grad degree program, perhaps in an addendum, explain why you stopped your program and are now applying to law school. Uh, there was a question about whether we'll open up for tours in the spring. Uh, the answer to that is not right now. Um, Rutgers has required everyone, including faculty, staff, and all students to show that they have had their boosters, not just the vaccines, but that they've been boosted or that they were approved for an exemption, in which case they need to show a negative COVID test um, every week. So at the moment, outside visitors are not allowed to come to the building right now. Um, that could no. change, but as of right now, that is. As of right now, the answer is no. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but we will have tours. Um, we we were working with one of our offices on the main campus um, to do a visual tour that you can click on. You'll be able to see uh, they go inside the buildings, they do the surrounding area, and they should be up. They're doing the voiceovers one more time, and they should be up on our website. Um, hopefully by maybe two or three weeks, certainly by the end of this month, they will definitely be up there. Um, another question about how long, how far along are we in the admission cycle? Um, that, I, I don't know. I think about a third of the way. Would you guess, Amy, something like yeah, that? Yeah, that sounds like, that sounds fair. Yeah, there's a lot more to go. We're, we mm -hmm. have not admitted the entire class. There's a lot more to go. Um, do you need internships in an application? No, you don't have to have an internship, right? So we're not going to look at your application and see that you don't have any internships and automatically decide that, you know, you're not a fit for our Chris Law School. It does help, though. It helps. It enhances. It adds to your to your application, especially if you're saying that you've known for, you know, a long time that you wanted to come to law school. We'll see students that have done some type of internship in the legal realm, uh, but it is not a requirement for your application. And we certainly don't um, put a number on how many we need to see to accept a student. Uh, what does priority deadline mean compared to final deadline? That's just to be as competitive as possible. Um, so we try to encourage students to apply by March 15th. You know, at that point, we are rolling admissions, so we've already accepted X amount of students. So we have to watch how many students we're accepting because we can only accommodate a class size of so many. Um, and also scholarships, right? So as students are being admitted, they're also being offered scholarships. So if you are hoping to be more competitive and, and hopefully, you know, be offered a scholarship, you want to apply as early as possible because once we start offering them and seats are accepted, there's less money to be offered to a student towards the back end of, of the application process. 
There's another question about any prerequisites from um, undergrad for law school. And the answer is no, there is none. Unlike medical school, where you have to follow a STEM program, um, anyone, any major applies for law school. You could be an engineering major, anthropology, zoology, um, religious studies. We've seen all kinds of majors applying for law school. The important thing is that in your program, whatever it is in your undergraduate program, that you are um, learning how to do research, how to do um, critical analysis, how to write. We can't teach you what a noun and a verb is, but lawyers do that. They write, they do a lot of research, and then they have to be good editors of their of their writing. So if you if you take courses that encourage that and encourage not just regurgitating back information to a professor, but also analyzing the information that you're reading, either on paper or orally, because lots of what goes on in law school is conversation in the classroom. It's very little, let me just sit back and let the professor tell me what the law is. You have to figure it out. And that's really what law school is all about. So any major works for law school. Um, how does having a 3.0 undergrad uh, affect possible admissions? So as we've said before, we, we read holistically. So we're not just looking at your undergrad GPA. We're not just looking at your LSAT score. Um, and, you know, a 3.0. Okay, so what was your major? Maybe you're a STEM major, right? So, you know, we're going to see students coming in with um, a lot, you know, like math, you know, math majors and things like that, that bio majors that we might not necessarily be seeing the 3.4s, the 4.0s from. Um, you might have had something catastrophic happen in the middle of your undergrad experience, and you write an addendum explaining to us, you know, how a semester or a whole year hurt your GPA. So, you know, it really is a holistic approach, and, and it kind of depends on, on what's behind that, that 3.0. Okay, there was another question about um, if somebody is a reapplicant, and how does that affect, you know, is there any weight given um, when reapplying? Um, I don't even notice <laughs> if somebody has applied before. It is on the CAS report, but I'm looking at what you're handing us right now and today. Once in a while, I will go back and look at the old application, but by and large, uh, we don't. So we're, we care about where you are at this point in time when you're doing your application, not what happened a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. And like Dean Walton said, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Just because you That's didn't right. get accept it the first time around doesn't mean you won't get accepted the second time around. Uh, and that shows that you're committed and you're interested in coming to Rutgers Law, right? That, you know, maybe you didn't get in the first time, but you still want to come. Um, so it doesn't hurt you. Do first year students have class on Fridays? Yes. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a schedule where there wasn't a class on Friday. Uh, it's usually like one class though, you know, it's, it's not a full, it's not like a full day. Usually the students are done by noon ish on Fridays to give you, you know, a little bit a little bit longer of a weekend break to study and see family. There's a question about a resume and is it a job resume? Um, uh, I'm a little confused by your question, but the resume that we asked for in your application should be like a job resume, like a resume that you prepared for a job. Letters of intent weighed into decisions. Um, I'm assuming that you mean if you're writing a letter saying, I really, really, really want to go to Rutgers, how will we um, take that as part of our consideration? Um, that's all part of our review process. So it's another piece of your application and uh, the committee members who are reviewing files will obviously see that. Um, if you, if Rutgers is where you want to be a law student, um, you know, this is the only place you want to apply. Should you continue to attend info sessions? Completely a personal choice. Um, so, you know, the info session that was like my voiceover that I, you know, that primarily stays the same. The Q and A's always bring up different questions because it's who attends and who asks questions. So if you want to continue to attend to hear those questions, you're more than welcome. Uh, you can also reach out to us with your own personal questions and you don't have to continue to attend the info sessions if you don't want to. Um, I definitely recommend, you know, when the campus is back open, depending on when you're applying, um, you know, come and tour the campus, even though, you know, you. You, Rockers is, is it for you if you have never been to Rockers Law School or to New York or to Camden? I definitely recommend coming in and experiencing it. Are any of the courses offered virtually? Uh, so, if you are part of the evening hybrid program, then some of your courses will, will be online. Um, 
some courses because of the pandemic, you know, at, or at certain times, all of them have been offered virtually, but the goal is that we, you know, our students are back in person as of Monday to, you know, for their courses. So the goal is it's in, it's in person classes, unless you're in the hybrid program. Definitely for um, the 1st year, everything is going to be in person and even with the hybrid program, you're going to spend the 1st 3 weeks in person. And then after that, Monday and Tuesday in person and Wednesday and Thursday, you will be remote. Um, there are some upper level classes, um, mostly smaller seminars, I think this year, not a lot of them that have been offered remotely. We have to make sure that you are not taking too many credits remotely because um, the New York bar examiners put a limit as to how many credits can be earned online or remote. And so we want to make sure that by the time you graduate, that you haven't used too many of your credits in a remote learning situation, and then you can't sit for the New York bar. Um, so law school really is more in person than it is remote. Uh, fee waivers for our application. We're actually not charging to apply. Um, so you don't have to worry about a fee waiver this year. And does it help your application to be Rutgers undergrad alumni? Um, it can, because we understand the kind of coursework that you've taken. So we do look at the transcripts when Amy and I were both file readers and we do look at transcripts and I will notice, you know, the courses that you've taken, the difficulty of the courses. Um, we know the program well, so yes, it could, it could help you, but you're still competing with everyone else who is in the pool. So we're not looking only at Rutgers people on a separate in a separate group. We're comparing you to everyone else who's applying. What is the diversity statement? Um, diversity statement is an optional essay, um, so you don't have to write the diversity statement. Um, you know, we encourage students that are interested in um, applying to the minority student program, if you want to be part of that, to write a diversity statement. And there are some schools that uh, require a diversity statement. So if you have to write it for other schools, you can just include it with our application. There's a place that's called additional information. You can attach it as an essay uh, with your application, and we will definitely see that. But it's How not required. It it's definitely not required. How long would it take to finish your degree if you're only taking three classes per semester? As a part-time student taking three classes per semester, well, here's here's the parameters for part-time. Um, you need to take at least a minimum of eight credits per semester, but no more than eleven. Once you get into the twelve credit range, then you are considered a full-time student, and you'll be charged full-time tuition. To complete 90 credits, it will take you four to four and a half years. It's four years if you take classes in the summer and um, uh, push yourself ahead by taking those some of those credits in the summer. There are also some courses that are offered in um, condensed form during winter break, um, during the spring break. And so if you have time and you can take a week off because those are offered during the day over a number of hours for a week, then you could push your, your program ahead a little bit and add a few more credits that way. In general, it's probably gonna take you four and a half years um, as a part-time student. And that's because once in a while, you need a break in the summer <laughs> and you don't wanna take, you don't wanna continue just going and going and going. It's, it's a grind, it really is a grind because you're working full-time, um, you know, you might have um, you might have friends and family that you wanna see once in a while, and then you've got law school on top of that. Under what circumstances uh, would we advise an applicant to write an addendum example a discrepancy between what LSAC is saying their GPA is versus your transcript? Um, my recommendation on addendum is if it's something that you believe we're going to look at and stop and go, huh, or not really understand what's going on, that's the perfect place to explain it in the addendum. I would much rather have a student highlight something and say, hey, I know that there's kind of something that's questionable, let me explain it, than for myself, Dean Walton, Dean Rupert, to then kind of have to like make up or try to figure out like, you know, what was going on. Um, so yeah, I would absolutely use the addendum for that. Credits for a course can range anything from two credits up to four. Um, however, clinics are very credit heavy. They can be six or eight credits, depending on the clinic. Um, there are some courses that are small mini courses, as I mentioned before, they may only be one credit. Your first year program, all of your major courses, contracts towards CIPRO, um, constitutional law, property, and criminal law are four credits each. So it's expected that you will have four hours of instruction in those courses during the course of a week. Legal writing and research is two and a half credits each semester. Um, so if you're taking upper level evidence, 
Sometimes it's three credits, sometimes it's four credits. So it depends on the course and what the professor wants to offer. The other big courses like criminal procedure, uh, business associations are usually four credits. I want to know if, if we're open fully in the summer. Um, the summer class will, the summer session will be limited in terms of course offerings, obviously, because not everybody's going to teach all summer long. Um, in Newark, those courses are going to be at night. So there's only so many slots that are open for uh, evening courses in Camden. Some of them are during the day and some of them are at night. So it will be a more limited selection, certainly not the full complement of what you would see during the academic year. How many credits a semester for full time? Do you want to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's 15 a semester to hit your 90 credits if you want to graduate in three years. Um, mm -hmm. And like Dean Watt was saying, you know, we do offer summer courses. So if you take summer course that lessens your load in the, in the fall or spring. Um, there's one about asking acceptance, which I don't know that we have the statistic for this accepting percentage rate. Um, if a student were to submit their application now compared to if they submitted it during the holiday break. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's too detailed for me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we are reading. I'll tell you, we are definitely reading and we are accepting. We have not accepted yes. all the students that we're going to accept. So don't think if you didn't submit in over winter break that, you know, you're not going to get in, submit your application as soon as you feel confident that your application is complete. Um, I think we've touched on all of the questions, but if there's a chance that we happen to miss your question in the queue of questions, please go ahead and submit it now. We have a few more minutes, uh, or if there's any last minute questions that you would like to ask, we are here for a few. Uh, I'm going to also put my email into the chat. So this way, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Happy to answer them. Uh, Dean Walton, does MSP apply to someone with a disability? It depends. Um, I asked um, uh, Clinton to email me separately after we're done so that we can have a conversation on that. Um, if you have family members that are alum, should you put that? We actually have a place on our application um, asking that. So you can go ahead and list them in that section. Okay, you're taking the February LSAT and how long will a decision take? It depends. It depends where we are in our file reading and how far along this is when we're getting slammed right now with applications. So it depends how far along we are in our file reading and when we can get to you. Generally, we say six to eight weeks, but sometimes it can take longer. Uh, contact information information. I'm going, I, I already a few up. I'll do it again. I put my email address so you can email me. I'm also putting our general admissions email. Um, so if you would prefer to send your questions there, you can contact us. Uh, at admissions at law.ruckers.edu. I will put that in. And I just put my email address in there as well. How many students are accepted for each class? I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember that number um, because we're filling two, pla two places, mm -hmm. don't forget. So last year, 474 students started between Camden and Newark. So that's how many people matriculated between mm -hmm. the two campuses. And Newark has um, slightly more room, like physical room, than Camden does. So, so Newark has um, a slightly larger class on their campus than we do on the Camden campus. Um, you can apply whenever you're ready to apply. We will not complete your file until the score is released. So you can also prepare your application, wait till you get your score, and then hit submit, and off it goes. As soon as we get that, we get applications um, constantly, all day long, from LSAC. As soon as the application comes in, it orders the CAS report that comes in electronically and we search for completed files, maybe once or twice a week. You'll get emails from us when things are received and again, when things are completed. Okay, so if we don't have any more questions, I would like to thank you for taking uh, an hour out of your day to come listen to us talk and, and help answer your questions. Um, our contact information is in the chat, so please feel free to reach out to any of us, all of us if you have questions. Uh, Dean Walton, thank you so much for taking the time today You're welcome. To, to help answer all of the tough questions. Um, this is recorded. You will be getting a link tomorrow with it, and it'll also be posted on the website right around where you registered, you know, same page where you registered for it. So everyone have a fantastic rest of your day and a good rest of your week. Thank you. Hi, everyone, you asked great questions. Good luck. Good luck. Yes, good luck.